Okay, I think we should get started. Yes. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this IEMS HKUSD seminar. My name is Navahar. I'm the moderator of today's seminar. It is my great pleasure to introduce today's speaker to you. Uh, our speaker today is Professor Sunny Huang. He is an assistant professor of economics at HKUST. Um, he's also a faculty um, member uh, affiliated with a faculty affiliate with HKUST Institute of Emerging Market Studies. Sunny received his PhD in economics from the University of Washington in 2016, and his research areas are industrial organization and applied microeconomics. The theme of his, of his research is to combine economic models and econometric techniques to study policy-oriented topics and issues. His research projects tackle problems in procurement, public resource allocation, corruption, financial development, digital economy, and online markets. Today's talk by Professor Sunny Huang is um, a product of a project funded by an IEMS research grant. Professor Sunny Huang will be speaking to us for about 45 minutes, and then we will have about 15 minutes for Q&A. And if you came in a few minutes earlier, you will know that um, for the question and answer, you will have to type in your questions in the Q&A box that you should be able to see at the bottom of your Zoom screen to the right. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over the time and the platform to Professor Sunny Huang to deliver his talk. Professor Wang. All right, thanks for the nice introduction. So let me start sharing my slides. Uh, so welcome, uh, thanks for spending this uh, time with me uh, for the next one hour. So I'm going to try to talk for about 45 minutes and then uh, leave 15 minutes for Q&A. Uh, during the talk, you are welcome to post your question on the Q&A box and uh, uh, I might pause in the middle and then see whether there was some good question, clarification question I can quickly reply. Uh, for longer questions and discussions, we will leave it to the end. Okay, so the, uh, the title of this talk is called Resource Allocation Among Competing Innovators. So uh, we start this talk as, a, uh, we have four co-authors and then uh, Ying Lu Chen is a, uh, uh, working at ISOM department. And then these two are our USD student and uh, after we finish this project, they have all good, got, uh, got good placement. One at CUHK Shenzhen, the other at uh, South uh, Southern University of uh, Science and Technology. So uh, these are all good placements. Okay, so uh, this talk is about uh, VC investment uh, or an innovation. So if you look at uh, how famous VC investor says, okay, they, uh, when you talk about their investment strategy, there were three things they emphasize. Uh, in this uh, 1985 book, the called The New Venture, it says that if you have good people, propitiatory technology, and a high growth market sector, you will win every time. And these three things mentioned here, investing in people, investing in technology, and investing in market, is considered as the three mainstream VC investment style. And that there are many representative uh, VC firms that use them as the philosophy when they invest. Uh, when they talk about investing people, people, they says that people make product and product to make people. And some, uh, so this uh, uh, author rocks is the one that invests in the, uh, the first pack of these uh, semiconductor uh, firms in Silicon Valley. And this uh, Tom Perkins is the, this Perkins is the, the one who uh, formed the uh, HP. So the HP from the P is this uh, Perkins. So he says that the market risk is inversely proportional to technical risk. So uh, the best startup company would push the frontier of technology and thereby guarantee market power and selling opportunity for their product. So if you take risk on the developing propitiatory technology, then uh, the market risk will be lower. Uh, in this paper, we'll emphasize the third stream of this uh, investment style that's called investing in market. So if you are in VC, you will know this guy called Donald Valentine, who is the founder of uh, SQL, uh, SQL Capital, which is a, a very good VC firm. And he says that uh, his investment style is that you find a great market and you build multi -com company in that market. So if, th thinking about the market condition, 
and uh, building sometimes multiple company uh, is the focus uh, of this current paper. So I will show you some uh, how the market forces works in the in the waiting set sector. Uh, so there is a term called creative destruction in economics. Uh, creative destruction means that if you make a drastic innovation and develop the next generation of product, uh, then uh, the last generation product will be destroyed. So this is called de creative destruction. Uh, in this hardest industry, the smaller uh, that you can make on your hard disk, 14 inch, eight inch, 5.25 inch, means that it's a more innovative product. And you can see that this is the years, and these are the number of firms. As the time goes by, people innovate. Uh, each generation of product have an age of a prospect and it goes down. What I want to emphasize on this uh, diagram is that at the beginning, when you have you know, less firms, uh, you know, when this product is first being developed, you have less firm. And then more and more firm will imitate and copy and compete in the market. And then the profit of that market will start to shrink. And then people will think about developing the next generation product. So that's a next step of innovation. Uh, in the medical sector, it's a uh, pharmaceutical sector is very similar. So you have a drug and then there's a life cycle of it. So when you develop a drug, uh, you file a patent and the patent is good for 15, 20 years. And uh, when the drug is being approved by FDA, it went to the market and start to pick up price. So at some point, the drug is widely being accepted. It has a price peak. But once the patent period is off, then there will be competitor coming in, uh, launching what we call the generic drugs, which is have similar you know, uh, function of this uh, innovative drug. Once you have competitor, then uh, the price will drop and the profit will drop. So that's how the market forces is going to you know, uh, reduce uh, the profits of an innovator over time. So uh, one more example is about this uh, 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 bike sharing apps that we see. So in China, uh, in 2015, uh, there are more than 162 bike sharing app startup. They are all backed by different VC investors. Some of them are even using public money. They are uh, government set up ventures and that they invest in this uh, uh, prospect industry, uh, you know, give money to this uh, uh, bike sharing apps. Uh, but after four years in 2019, uh, over China, there were less uh, active bike sharing app remaining. Uh, in most of the, it turns out that in most of cities, the market size can only sustain at most three of them. Even you have four, that's not sustainable. In Hong Kong, the situation is uh, there were lots of uh, bike sharing startups. Uh, they try to start a business all around, you know, 2017, except this one because OFO starts earlier in mainland. They receive investment in uh, by different VCs. Some of them uh, share the same investor, like Alibaba is here, and you can see that uh, this uh, Jensen Robotic it also invests two of them. So this VC firm back up this uh, uh, bike sharing startups, but uh, because of this uh, competition, the market just don't have the enough size to support that many firms. All of them get closed or stop maintenance. Uh, the only one that remaining good in Hong Kong they can use uh, is uh, this local bike that I tested that's still working last uh, last week. Okay, so uh, these are the uh, how the market forces is going to uh, cause this a uh, profit reduction when you have a lot of imitator of the same innovative idea. So. Uh, our paper is related to a bunch of literature talking about this uh, issue about competing innovator. So first, uh, there is an ambiguous relationship between innovation and competition. Some people says competition stimulate innovation. Some people says competition is going to, uh, you know, discourage innovation. In general, the relationship is uh, ambiguous, and then there has been a long theory uh, of the long theory literature on this topic. And second, uh, we, our paper is related to another uh, topic about stim stimulating innovation within the firm. Usually in the firm, you have several units. And then if you, have, you are a manager, you are CEO, 
you want them to explore different direction and try to uh, develop the next generation of product. Uh, these are called parallel development. So, and they, if you have several units of the of a company and they can try different things, uh, then you know you have a larger chance of getting the right thing and the launch a new product. If we use WeChat every day, by the time of WeChat is being developed in 2013, uh, there were actually lots of parallel projects similar like that, uh, messenger apps. And then uh, Tencent find WeChat is the most successful one. And then because it is within the firm, so that uh, the company will close down all other uh, projects and only launch this one, so that there will be no, you don't want your own company to come, a uh, different unit of the same company to compete with each other. Uh, pattern race is another form to describe uh, this uh, horizontal relationship of competitor, uh, of in competing innovators. So people compete and try to develop next generation product and the final pattern. So the hardest the example that we see is like that. Uh, so uh, if you look at it in a dynamic way, uh, you know, you register pattern and then people and then get become the monopoly for a certain period of time and the people innovate again, it became the uh, incumbent. So this is uh, uh, about, you know, so, but the pattern race is usually talking about the situation before product launch. There was a competition among innovator that compete who can launch the product first. Uh, and there is also uh, uh, people study uh, competing innovator in way of a contest. Contest means that uh, you want to develop something and then you launch a contest and ask the researcher or innovator says that, okay, who can get this goal fastest? Then you get a prize. Who can get this goal uh, with, the, with the best uh, idea? You get this prize. So these are different ways to you know, think about this uh, competing innovator framework. Uh, but we, this paper, we have a different angle. Uh, it's not about just studying the relationship among the competing innovator, but we think from the angle of uh, the principal, who is the investor. So he is going to allocate resources to these innovative agents. And then these agents will conduct innovation independently. This agent, this agent will anticipate that Okay, there may be some exposed competition if not just me successful and launch the product, but also other agents. So fierce competition may discourage excellent innovative effort. So if I know lots of other agents receiving the same resources and developing the same product, then uh, you know, this, uh, this will cause problem because they will going to be discouraged excellent, okay? All right, so let's uh, uh, continue. So there will be one principle. Uh, so this is uh, the, the, the branch one where we will have one, uh, the one principle. The principle is considered as private investors or we call it VCs. And then there will be public funding authorities. So it, it, it can be either pi private or public, doesn't matter. As long as it's profit maximizing, we are going to study the case of non-profit maximizing, but not at this point. So we have a private investor, it's a VC and then, or it's like Science Park and NSF, or this is the US Small Business and uh, Innovative Research uh, Program. And then we have multiple agents. These are the competing innovators. They can be startups and then who conduct R&D to launch innovative product. And then there will be competitor in the product market. So the key trade-off of between the innovation failure and rent, there will be a key trade-off that we try to capture here. So the key trade-off is called innovation failure and rent dissipation, okay? What does it mean by innovation failure? If you invest only on a few firms, then maybe none of them is successful. Then you're putting all the egg in one basket, then that's innovation failure. But if you divert it to many, uh, innovators, then the problem is it will, it's going to cause rent dissipation. Okay, rent dissipation means uh, the there was a there's a rent of this market, and then but when there were too many innovators that competing for the same thing, then it's going to uh, cause uh, it's it's going to cause the profit of this market to shrink. This is called rent dissipation. So investing in more uh, agents will cause the probability that at least one agent succeeds increase. 
But on the other hand, when you diverse, it's going to cost probably them more than one agent succeeds. When there were more than one agent, the profit will reduce due to what we call business dealing effect or rent dissipation. If the agent anticipate it, then the agent will lost some incentive from you know, working hard on this area. So agents strategically choose effort based on resource allocation. And when we combine all these things together, we will have a result of the optimal investment strategy among the competing innovators. So the main result is that the optimal diversification level will first increase and then decrease in the amount of resources. So when you have more and more resources, at the beginning you concentrate and then you start to diverse. By the end, when you have a lot of resources, you start to concentrate a little bit back. So that's what we're going to, uh, what I'm going to uh, present. Okay, so let's start with some quotes. So we got this problem from uh, the literature. So uh, this paper, okay, Kaplan and Stromberg, study lots of VC memos. So uh, this VC manager, they need to do a memorandum like, okay, what, what should we pay attention to uh, about our investment? Uh, uh, they gather a lot of these memos and uh, find out that people care about external factors such as market size and competitions. So of course, they also care about internal factors such as quality of management and performance. So many of this memo has statements like, company is targeting a significant market segment. There's no competitor. There is more enough room for several competitors so that this market size, whether there's enough rent to support and gain back uh, the investment for innovation matters. So even in the earlier study, uh, people also find out that VC manager care a lot about barrier to competi competitive entry. And uh, the, uh, Josh Lerner, who is a famous innovation scholar at Harvard. So he evaluated this US small business and innovation research program. And he find out that sometimes this SBIR program awards, awards cases, uh, you know, they want these uh, case, this awardees to have spillover to so the benefit uh, the, the innovation sector. But at the same time, if you invest in many cases, uh, you tend to uh, create the losses uh, from having many competitors. So people have noticed this, but all these are mostly uh, observational or empirical paper. And uh, we uh, are hereby to provide a theoretical uh, background for that. Okay, so the baseline model have two agents. There is a resource allocation stage so the principal choose his budget on this, how to how much to invest on this two agent subject to a budget. And then there is the innovation stage. The two agent will choose the effort, X1, X2, non-corporately, and then there will be a product market. The principal will choose this to maximize the total profit from the two agent. And then these profits from the product market will be shared by the principal or the investor and the agent proportionally. The agent will get gamma, and then the principal will get one minus gamma. So this is a, a like an equity share. So you own 40% of the company, I own 60%, and then we divide this by 40, 60. So the resources uh, for, the for the principal is not costly in the benchmark model. We can let it to be costly, I will show you. But uh, we think this is more realistic. The reason is as a VC manager, typically you are you're getting waves of uh, investment and then you just care about getting the best return of it. Uh, but you don't care about marginally, okay? You are investing more. It doesn't directly give you a marginal cost. For public uh, funding authorities, the same. The government gives you a budget and then you allocate it. So there's no marginal cost from allocating more money. So the agent will choose this effort to maximize uh, the expected profit minus the effort. So there is an innovation success function so it's, it has a form of both the resources and the effort matters. So if you have no resources, you cannot successful, but if you exert no effort, you cannot successful. And then, but if this two thing goes together, you can increase the uh, success rate. So this functional form is taken from the uh, literature. So people use it. It actually have an interpretation of called the Poisson 
Bending model is uh, not very important. So uh, uh, we can generalize, okay? We can generalize uh, the market. Uh, we can generalize the uh, uh, innovation success function into these two general class. We haven't explored the boundary of our results, but uh, these two general class uh, will work, all right? So agents conduct innovation independently. Uh, if an agent successfully innovates, he will launch a product to the market. So the product market is like that. If there's only one product, monopoly, and then we normalize his profit to one. But if there are two products, then each of the successful agent will get the profit of alpha. So alpha will measure the intensity of competition or the strength of the business still in effect. This product market, we can nest a Kuna model, hoteling model, discrete choice model, whatever to it. So the thing is, as long as you have this fact that when you have more firm competing, each of the profit shrinks, then it fit into this model. So for one agent, if you think about his own problem of innovation investment, it has this uh, hump shape. So there are two features of it. Number one is an agent need to actively participate only if he receives sufficient amount of resources. If, if the resource is too little, it's not worthy to exert effort, then he will exert zero effort. On the other hand, when you invest in two agents, both agents receiving resources and they expect there will be competition, maybe, okay, in the product market, then they are less inclined to invest. So that number one, they start, you know, invest, they start to exert effort with uh, uh, only if with a large amount of resources. So you require more resources to stimulate two agents. Number two is this uh, strength of the that rent dissipation uh, does matters. I will skip some math detail, okay, of derivation, but I want to point out one thing that is when you have two agents, they are competing agent. There are one thing different from investing only one agent. That is, sometimes you can reduce the total amount of resources, Be and then it weakens the competition. And then somehow it can better incentivize the agent. Okay, so that's the feature of a multiple multiple competing agent uh, framework. So the uh, I will directly skip some of this uh, math and go to the feature of what the optimal resource allocation look like. So we, there were three parameters of this model: alpha, strength of competition, gamma, and uh, and the b bar. Gamma is the profit sharing rate. B bar is amount of resources. From the agent's perspective, gamma times B is kind of how how abundant how uh, abundant is the resources from the agent's perspective. So alpha measures competition intensity, and uh, gamma B measures the abundance of resources. The duopoly competition will reduce the total profit when alpha is less than one half. That means that alpha plus alpha is less than one. That means you have two firms. The total market the total uh, profit shrinks. In this case, we will have what we call rent dissipation. And then so half alpha is here on this uh, uh, x-axis. It divides the region into left and right. So on the right, rent there's no rent dissipation. You have two firm that's better than having just one firm in the product market. In this case, uh, we can see the investment have only one cutoff. The cutoff here divides this uh, region C, divides things into two region. Below here, you only invest in one firm. Actually here, if you don't have too much resources, you invest in zero firms. And above this red line, you will invest in two firm equally. Okay, so you diverse. Okay, so when there are less resources, concentrate. When there are more resources, diverse. Okay, so so that's the case without rent dissipation. Well, on the left hand side, when there is rent dissipation, that means if you have two firm, each firm owns less than half of the profit when you have a monopoly. Then in this case, from the principal's perspective, it may be not worthy to diverse, okay? So when this rent dissipation is very strong in the region A, you always just invest in one, but in the middle, there's a region that we have the res result of this non-monotone pattern. That is here you first, you invest in one, and then you diverse invest in two, but you switch back to investing one. How could this happen? 
Let me use uh, two diagram to get you the key uh, intuition. So we call it the trade-off between innovation failure and rent dissipation. So when the investment diverse, you, you invest in more agent, then the probability of at least one agent success will increase. So the innovation fail failure rate will decrease. So this is characterized by this uh, black line here, black dotted line. So this is when you have two agents and then at least one of the success. But on the other hand, when you invest in two, the probability of having two agents, which is this blue line here, so both agents success also increases. So that's caused the rent dissipation problem. But why there is this uh, uh, non-monotone pattern, first increase and decrease, that we can explain by the right-hand side diagram. So this is delta. The delta measures the benefit from diverse investment. So the first term is that it is at least one agent success when you invest in two. The second term here, which is this red line on the left-hand side panel, that is the probability that you have only one, you have, you're investing one firm and this firm success. So when you diverse, you might be able to increase the success rate but how much is this increment? So this is the difference between them. So diverse investment, concentrated investment, and what is the benefit from diverse investment? So we can see that if you subtract this uh, black line with this red line, so that's the difference, that's the benefit from diverse investment. And here at the beginning, Actually, when the resource is small, it's better to concentrate because you need to stimulate, stimulate the agent to give at least this amount of resources in order to actively participate. But up to some point, which is here, then we have this black line above the red line. That is, okay, there is a benefit from diversity of investment because it reduces, it increases the chance that you have at least one successful innovation. But because probability is bounded by one, so this benefit is going to converge to zero as the resources increases. So this drive the force of first, so you can see the benefit first is negative and it's positive, but it's shrinking. So that's why we have this first increase and then decrease result. So for, for intermediate level of alpha, the optimal level of diversity, first increases and then decreases. So that's a key result we characterize in this uh, paper. Okay, is there any empirical evidence? Okay, so this is actually our next project. So uh, they, to test this uh, first increase and then decrease, which is let's say, okay, do you have some uh, region like that? Uh, it means that when the, for some sector, for some industry, if this is highly intense, then people tend to concentrate. Uh, but if we, for some industry, the competition is not severe, then people tend to diverse. But there are maybe somewhere in the region that you can see this uh, non monotone pattern. So uh, we do some, you know, uh, we're trying to gather some data, but let's see some, uh, this figure here. So uh, this is SQL investment. So uh, uh, SoftBank, sorry, this is SoftBank uh, investment pattern in China by year and by industry. So you can see on the left-hand side, they will allocate budget, like how much they invest in this uh, industry in this year. And then this is number of firm they invested. So in this uh, three sector, finance, health, and software, as they allocate more budget to this industry over the year, they tend to invest in more. So we have this increasing trend, right? So uh, in sometimes, sometimes they can invest in 10 uh, similar company uh, in the health sector in a year. On the right-hand side, there are other industry like e-commerce, transportation, entertainment, or media. You find out that when the amount of resources increases, the amount of investment increases, we don't see this increasing trend of number of firms. Uh, but some of them, you know, you show this uh, non-monotone trend. Okay, so when you have a lot of resources, you tend to concentrate it on one firm. So this is one actually here. They don't diverse on two or three firms. We do see some possible, uh, you know, uh, uh, evidence in, uh, in, 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 in reality. We are still gathering a larger VC investment history data set uh, to try to see whether uh, such a forces exist in reality. So uh, some extension, 
Number one is that this robustness of this a key trade-off between innovation failure and anticipation, which drive this momentum pattern, is it will survive under endogenous profit sharing. That means uh, the principle we choose gamma, you know, how much I'm going to share with you of the of your profit. So uh, if you share more of the, you know, uh, if you ask for more of the profit, then the agent is less incentivized. So you have this, uh, the choice of gamma have this uh, value creation and value capture uh, uh, trade-off. So the larger gamma, which means that I will give you, uh, if give the startup more share, 80%, 90%, the startup will be more incentivized. But a smaller uh, gamma means that you have a value capture that is take most of the share of the uh, startup's uh, profit. So this is the choice of gamma. And we find if we let the principal choose gamma, it's going to get the exact same pattern of uh, exogenous profit sharing rate. So the, this uh, uh, does not affect our result. Number two is the large class of innovation uh, is the, about multiple agents. So uh, this, this will survive. So we will, uh, I will show you this diagram. That is when you have not just two in agent, but you have N, M agents. In this case, you have a very similar pattern of this uh, diverse investment. But the only thing is uh, you can see here at 0.5, you have this cutoff here, okay? So this cutoff here is uh, what we see before that you, be, uh, you change between one firm and two firms. So this is investing in two. But when you have M firm, how much you invest, then there are other cutoff giving you this share. So you invest in one, invest in two, invest in three, invest in four. And then if you take a slice at this uh, 0.95, you take a slice here, then you have this shape like this. So as the investment amount increases, you first increase in diversity and then decrease. So this cutoff is high because uh, the rent dissipation will happen uh, when you have you know M firms, but the profit is smaller than having just one firm. So rent dissipation happens here. This determines the cutoff. And then also our uh, model will uh, survive under costly resources. Costly resources means that marginally, if you invest in more, it's going to give you some cost. Like you run a knowledge transfer office, you still need to, even you allocate resources, you need to monitor them. So there was some marginal cost. When you have this marginal cost, uh, then the optimal level investment may not, of course, will not be investing all of them, uh, but you will have an incentive to save resources. Uh, in this case, as a C increases, the marginal cost of spending money increases, uh, you spend the principal spend less, but by replacing B bar by this B star, the resource allocation rule will exhibit the same property. Okay. So lastly, it's about large class of uh, innovation success uh, function. So we, we have seen that in the earlier, so that will, uh, that will work, okay? And then the, uh, the only thing that does not survive when you uh, uh, want to see the extension is uh, non-profit principle, uh, non -profit principle objectives. So if the principle is not profit oriented, it's not trying to get a gamma share of it, uh, it, instead talking other goal, then uh, our result may, will not hold. The number on the tone result will not hold. Let's see why. So let's say the principal, uh, you know, care about uh, these goals, like number of successful innovation, which is many of the government projects that I just want these startup to be successful. Number two is probability of at least one successful, uh, you know, innovator. Sometimes you invest in vaccine, you want at least one of them success or you care about consumer surplus, total welfare. So these nonprofit objective will cause a monotone result. That is when you have more resources, you invest in more. When you have the resources increases, you invest in more project. Uh, so the, the, if you have two agents, the, it will first invest in, get dedicate all resources to one and they divide it equally to two. Uh, but the important thing is we need to know is why not you know, just diverse as much as you can? Uh, we need to pay attention that although the principal, the investor, the public funding authority is not profit oriented, the agents, the startups are still profit maximizing. So the rent dissipation can discourage them from exerting effort. In this case, okay, so if you diverse the resources too much, each agent only receive a tiny bit, or they see that while many agents receive the same resources, they will be discouraged and you end up not successful. 
So that's the reason why even the, uh, the founding authority does not care about profit. He still need to care about the agents are profit maximizing and then uh, you know, diversify the resource in a proper way, but not to the maximum. The principle are more reluctant to diversify resources when maximize the probability of at least one innovation succeeding. Okay, so if you want to just guarantee one, uh, then uh, like development of COVID-19 vaccine, then uh, you switch to diversity only when you have a lot of resources. Okay, lastly, we want to uh, talk about uh, some uh, policy, uh, policy implication extensions. Number one is what if you have two uh, to investor. So the two principal uh, cases. So this will require, of course, a new paper, uh, which I'm working on. Okay. So there were two, uh, but let's see a simple uh, case here. So think about there's a leader and a follower. So there's a, a leading investor, and then there's a follow up investor. And there's still the two uh, agent framework. And then when once the you know, the leader first make investment plan and then the follower observe the investment plan and then do an investment. The two agent will, you know, if they receive investment like from this two investor half half, then the profit will also be divided half half. So they will share, the agent's profit will be shared by principle according to the proportion of their investment. The ratio of the total, we, we, here we plot one thing. That's the ratio of the total profit with and without and with the follower. So on top is the profit, you know, just that's just one investor. And then on the bottom, that's the profit when you have a follow-up investor, they have the same amount of resource than you. So profit from one, one investor and profit from two investors. So if you have a additional investor that may reduce the total profit, when this delta is less than one, because have one investor, these are two investor. And if this is less than one, that means that having a next investor will actually hurt the first investor. Is it possible? Yes. Okay, so these uh, blue regions are those with, uh, you know, le less, you know, re it reduces the, the, the total profit. So uh, it is still caused by rent dissipation. On the other hand, there is an uh, issue of it may, it may easily to stimulate uh, two competing agents because as the first investor invests, the second investor may want to avoid and then get a larger share of the other agent. So this is consistent with some of the observation of what we call crowding out in uh, R&D investments. Sometimes the public R&D, like Science Park, Cyberport, when they invest in certain sector, it's going to crowd out private investment because there's a lot, uh, already a lot of money here. People find this in US, in SBIR program, in Canada, in this uh, uh, venture, public venture capital. So as a public investor, uh, you need to be very careful because sometimes when you use the public money to invest in a sector, it only costs quality out of the private investor because the private investor will find this not profitable to invest in this area anymore. So uh, some uh, policy implication. So resource allocation among competing uh, in a way to find out that the level of diversification should first increase and then decrease due to this trade-off between innovation failure and rent dissipation. The profit-oriented funding authority will invest resources in a more concentrated way than the non-profit ones. The non-profit one uh, will only increases the uh, diversity when they have more resources. So when resources are abundant, Non-profit funding authority will induce more successful innovation, higher social surplus, but lower profit from this sector. The resource capacity, okay, with the amount of resources, dictate the number of agents that the principal can incentivize effectively. That is why, okay, some level of concentration is, is necessary to guarantee active participation. So if you look at how funding authority give money or the venture capital allocate. There will, there are a lot of applicants always. And then you found a limited number of the agent and usually with equal amount, at least with a sector. So for example, the US Small Business uh, Innovation Research Program will give the same amount of uh, 150,000 uh, US dollar to successful applicant, same amount. And then the Hong Kong Cyber Port Creative Micro Fund will give 100,000 Hong Kong uh, dollar to each of the funding. 
a startup. So you have founded one and a non-founded one. But for the amount of founded one, they give equal amount. So this is consistent uh, with our uh, model prediction. And it is, uh, we, we characterize that behind, there is a force of this uh, two trade-off that you can only stimulate a limited amount of them because this startup are all profit oriented. So the product market competition is an important factor in determining the resource allocation distribution and the investment diversity in different areas. Concentrating resources in some area while diversifying in other may substantially improve the performance of the innovation investment, no matter for VC or for public funding authority. So for government official, uh, Josh Lerner uh, give this uh, following you know, uh, uh, guidance to them. He says that government subsidy will increase the profit of entrepreneur and venture capitalists. So if you set up this uh, ITF, uh, Hong Kong Innovation and Technology Funds, Cyber Forest Science Park, uh, it may lure more entrepreneur and venture capitalists into the market so that unless the supply of good idea grows, more firms and financers are chasing up the same idea so that's what we categorize. There will be anticipation in some of the area. There were too many competitors. And this competition may dep uh, depress returns and ultimately de discourage entrepreneurship venture investment. So uh, allocate the um, right amount of resources and also at the right amount of uh, right level diversification is a very important thing. Uh, some uh, quote, our result is consistent with some quotes uh, that uh, in the literature, for example, uh, when we talk about innovation portfolio manager, Henderson uh, 994 says that uh, this uh, portfolio diversity is a key to success. Successful resources allocation, not just simply a matter of picking a winner, but you know how diverse it is. So increasing diverse research stimulates productivity, but only up to a point. So this is also consistent with our finding. Uh, also for uh, this, uh, uh, Harvard Business Review paper says that the VC managers should diversify resources at first and then reduce the risk of failure of all the projects. But at the end, you should concentrate resources at the end to avoid launching too many products onto the market. And also, uh, some of the policy will do something they call it research consortia, that is, let the innovative firm to pool their resources and uh, to support them and conduct uh, research. Uh, and then the design of this research consortium, okay? So this is an empirical paper. They find out that it's more important than the level of resource expanded. In particular, if you have the firms that may be potential competitor in the product market, then, you know, letting them to collaborate on the research stage uh, is uh, usually a waste of uh, resources because they are not going to be very collaborative. So, uh, the, the ongoing area that we are also studying is about this area allocation problem. So because most of the startups tend to cluster in a certain trending area, and uh, as a founding authority, no matter you're private or uh, this is a private fund like uh, Alibaba or Cyberport, which is a public fund, uh, then you need to, uh, we need to be careful like how to do this area allocation. So we don't want to fund, you know, close competitor because that's a, uh, uh, it's not going just like the sharing bike is going to cause bankruptcy and waste of investment money. The coordination among public funding authorities, if there are many and private VC sometimes around the different innovative area is uh, uh, very important. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and uh, uh, see whether you want to ask question and discuss something. Thank you, Professor Huang for that uh, wonderfully enlightening talk. So participants, please feel free to type your questions in into the Q&A box. And Professor Huang, please feel free to pick and choose the order in which you answer the questions. Yeah. So I want to thank the question from Hai Jing. So uh, she says that, have you considered multiple principal situations? So this is exactly, uh, so we are working on the two next projects. One is about this area allocation. That's a case of one principal, but not just one area, you have two or three area. And then each of the, as this area may have uh, agents that you can invest in. And then how do you, you know, uh, do the funds across different area. And then the other is about several principal, several investor. So that's a, uh, and then if you have several investors and several agents, that's more realistic. It can fit into the, what we have in the VC market. 
there are many VC competitors and there are agents that you can uh, you know, uh, invest in. Uh, this, uh, this work is not trivial, although the data is available. Uh, but what we uh, characterize initially at this stage is that if you have more money into it, more money into this entire sector, it may not be good. So that's the uh, 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 that's the, our initial uh, observation. Uh, second question: Do you think the government should regulate when the profit began decrease during the competition? For example, we see huge resource waste in sharing by market. Yes, so indeed. So uh, it is a waste uh, when you invest in, let's say, sharing bike sharing app, or a lot of you know. Uh, let's say here, here we see this uh, in, in Hong Kong, they talk a lot about this uh, uh, green finance on this uh, solar energy, uh, and then they support lots of company. And uh, so if it is public money, then people do need to care about it because it, once you go up beyond a certain point, rent dissipation happens, uh, then this innovator will, will not make money and they will go bankrupt and then it will be a, a waste of the public money. Okay, so another question. Uh, Jun, uh, Zhang Junyue, so uh, does the model have underlying assumption that agent will accept the offer regardless of the choice of investment portfolio? I'm thinking if agents so discouraged by the multi-investment that it will collapse. So this is about participation constraint. So you are exactly right. So uh, uh, why we have this uh, uh, boundary here? So I, I can show you this diagram. So you can see that when uh, each agent needs to have at least amount of resources to be actively participate. So if the, the resource is not sufficient because it's been distributed in many agents, uh, then the agent is less likely to actively participate. So if you want to stimulate more agents to actively participate, then you require more resources. Yes. So this is an important force that driven the result. Yeah. Yeah, well, thanks for the... Uh, Great questions. Yeah. Any other questions from other participants? So Sonny, I have a, just a sort of discussion that I'd like to engage with you for a couple of moments, if I can. You mentioned that public investment should be carefully um, done so as not to crowd out private investment in R&D. But if we look at the history of um, the development of the mature innovation systems, they have been in the early phases of the development led by public R&D. Yeah. So does it matter at which stage that claim applies? In other words, does it matter that if it's a mature and highly developed innovation ecosystem, then public R&D should be more careful not to crowd up private R&D. But if it's an immature, like you a third world country like Tanzania or something, then public R&D can go further? Would that, would that possibly be the case? So uh, I, I, will so is, I will answer you by some uh, readings uh, from uh, Josh Lerner okay, from Harvard. So there are two important factors. Number one is a financial constraint. Financial constraint means that you just simply lack of money here. So there's far from this quantity out problem. Quantity out problem means that you already have sufficiently defined uh, funds here. So that when there is a financial constraint in the entire country uh, for innovation, then of course, uh, public uh, IND funds is going to uh, help you to get this uh, innovation sector start. But number two, it's about uh, the nature of uh, the, uh, the area. Some area you invest in because of the spillover, the huge spillover is not because it's for example, at the, when the U.S. is investing in the infrastructure of uh, internet, uh, it's it's about you know it's not about making money in the in the next five ten years. It's about the huge spillover uh, of uh, then from a private investment perspective, it's not worth it to invest in here because I'm not going to get my return back in a five ten year. But from the government, he knows this uh, basic research or this. Uh, uh, infrastructure thing that is going to have a huge spillover then from a public perspective it's worth it to invest. Uh, but for some industry, which I think, for example, bike sharing, I think it's a bad idea for, 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 for public money to get involved in this area. 
uh, if it's a money making sector, then there will be a private uh, VC to, to go into. Uh, it, there's no need to have public funding to get involved in it. So, so it basically depends on the sector and uh, the financial constraints and the extent of, of potential spillovers, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Any other questions from participants, please? There are some. So have you ever considered, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, I'm reading differently. So there's the last one, just curious about how to collect empirical data from different competitor uh, or even different principle. Okay, so there are VC uh, database. Okay, so uh, uh, US, uh, so I, 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 I can, uh, if, I, if I type in, uh, can they see? I don't know where I can, oh, I can. So the, the US one is called, there's a, there's a good one called Crunchbase. And then uh, in, in China one, this is called, this one I'm using. So you can use this as a keyword, you will, you will search and then and find it. Yeah, so they are very mature VC database. So these are VC tend to uh, publish like how much, what, which company they invest and then how much they are. And then some website will gather these information. So you can see that, right? Because I type to the attendee and all panelists, okay. Okay, any further questions from attendees, please? So how long have you been working on this project, Sonny? Oh, this project, uh, I think just uh, less than one year, I think. Yeah, less than one year, yeah. And, and has it been published yet or? It's an IR stage, yeah. I oh, think. I see. Yeah, so that's, okay. We're not, not uh, econ is a, slower feel, not as far as uh, <laughs> other, yeah. Right. Yeah. But I do want to learn how to publish in uh, research policy. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, fantastic. Uh, if there are no further questions from attendees, maybe we can call this session to a close. We can thank, uh, virtually thanks the, the speaker, faculty associate at the Institute of Emerging Market Studies at HKUST and in the Department of Economics for this in insightful and enlightening talk. And we look forward to welcoming you to further IEMS seminars. The first one of which will be next Thursday at the same time at four o'clock. Right. So in the meanwhile, thanks once again, Professor Huang for your, your seminar. Yeah. And we look forward to seeing you all attendees um, in future um, events. All right, thanks. Thank you. So I will I will end the end the seminar now. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Yep. Thank you. Okay, Carla. Bye bye.